Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video and supporting Floated Physics. Here's a train and here's a tunnel. The train, as you can see, is slightly bigger than the tunnel. But according to the special theory of relativity, moving things are length contracted in the direction of the motion. Which means if this train was moving very close to the speed of light, then you can see it becomes smaller than the tunnel and I can trap it momentarily. Did you see that? Let's see one more time. This time I'll slow down time so we can see it better. Here we go. All right, I close the door and look, look, look. For a moment, that train is trapped right now. It's not at rest, it's moving, I've just paused time. Um, but that's the important part, okay? I can trap it because of the link contraction and then it all, and then it goes away and the train keeps on going and all of that is great. But the question is, what does it all look like from the train's perspective? Let's see. So from the train's perspective, the train is at rest. So it will have a proper length and it'll be the rest of the world that's moving backwards and therefore the rest of the world is the one that is length contracted. And now you can kind of see where we're going with this. Now we can see the problem. Now the train no longer fits inside the tunnel. So the question is, what will the people in the train see? Well, let's run the animation and see. Here we go. Slow down time and up. Oh. That can't happen. Now the doors get stuck and that causes a paradox. On one hand, we know that motion is relative, which means it's absolutely correct to say that the train is at rest and it's the rest of the world that is moving backwards. So both frames are equally valid. And yet in one frame, we see that the doors do not hit the train. But in the other frame, we see that the doors do hit the train. But both cannot happen at the same time. The doors either hit the train or they don't. That's not relative, that's an objective truth. And that's the reason why here is a paradox. So what's going on over here? How do we solve this? Einstein says, Mahesh, just remember, the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. And I tell Einstein, I know that, but how does that help me resolve this paradox? I didn't get it initially. But then I incorporated that into the animation and boom, the paradox got resolved. So the promise of the video is I won't tell you what's going on. Instead, we will visually discover together how the fact that speed of light is a constant in all reference frames means there is no paradox over here and get a much deeper intuition behind special relativity. So if you're ready for this, let's begin. Einstein, first of all, tell me what is wrong in this animation. And Einstein says, Mahesh, you haven't considered the mechanism of the door closing. I'm like, what do you mean? So Einstein says, look, over here, as the train comes closer, Somehow, somehow there is some sensor somewhere that will send the signal to the doors exactly when to close, right? Since you haven't considered that mechanism through which the signals are traveling, you aren't considering the speed at which the signals are traveling, which is the speed of light, and making sure that that speed stays the same when you change reference frame. All of that is being omitted, and that's why you're getting the paradox. If you consider the mechanism carefully, whatever mechanism you want, but if you consider it carefully, then there will be no paradox. I'm like, okay. Cool, so I need some kind of a sensor um, to help the doors close at just the right time. And I came up with one. We're gonna have two buttons, okay? When the train comes on this, clicks on this particular button, it sends out a light signal. And when that light signal hits this button, it'll send out another light signal. And that's how the doors will shut down. Let me just show you. Here we go. Boom, here's the first light signal. And while animating, I have to make sure of just one thing the light travels in all the directions at the same speed. That is true in every single inertial frame, right? So light is gonna go out in all the directions exactly the same speed. And look, when the light hits the second button over here, it sends out another light signal. Again, traveling in all directions at the same speed. That's the core thing over here. And now the mechanism that I say is, when these signals hit the doors, that's when the doors are going to fall, whenever they hit the door. Now. In this particular case, I made sure that this button is right in between the two so that both the signals are going to hit the door at exactly the same time. And so the door will close exactly at the same time. Let's have a look at it. Boom. And there we go. Let's look at the whole thing one more time with all the signals and everything without pausing. Are you ready? Let's go. Now we are ready to look at things from the train's perspective. So going back from the train's perspective, the train is at rest, so it will have the normal length and everything else is moving towards it, so it will be length contracted. 
Again, when the button moves towards it, let's see, it creates a light signal. But now the important thing is, from our perspective, we are at rest, the light will always be moving away from this point at the speed of light in all the directions. That is the thing that I need to make sure of this, okay? So take a look at that. The light will expand in all the directions at the same speed as before. There you go, there you go. And now comes the key moment, folks. When this hits over here and it creates a light signal, again, the same thing should happen. Light is going to travel in all the directions at exactly the same speed. However, because this whole thing is now moving towards the train, the doors are moving towards the left. So now can you see what's going to happen over here? I want you to pause the video and think about this. Since this door is moving towards the light, it's going to hit the light first. And therefore this door is going to fall first. But since this door is moving away from the light, it's gonna take more time for the light to catch up to this door. Can you see that? The speed of light is still the same. So. I'm gonna play the animation now, watch it carefully. Here goes, look at that. It's going at the same speed and it hits the door here first. This means from the train's frame, this door is going to fall first and look, the door does not hit the train. So you can see right in front of your eyes, we're discovering the key to the resolution over here. And now the big question is, when will this door close? Well, I just have to wait for this light signal to come and hit this door over here. Now the anxious part for me, while I was looking at this animation, the rendered part for the first time, was when will that happen? Will it wait until the train clears it or not? Will this door get stuck or not? Because I've tried to make the physics as perfect as possible over here. So let's watch it together, folks, in its full glory, what will it look like from the train's perspective? Are you ready for this? Let's go. Come on. Clears it! There you go! Wasn't that incredible? When I first looked at it, it just clicked. I feel visual discovery is one of the coolest way to learn things. And if you want to visually discover more concepts for free, check out Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant also provides intuition using visuals, interactive visuals in science, data, maths, and computers. And because it's on my phone as well, I am now addicted to it. I can just spend some time on it every single day and it'll remember where I last left off and then I can just pick up from there. But its incredible feature is that it starts from basics and goes all the way to the advanced stuff. The course that I will especially recommend here is visualizing data. I mean, right off the bat, we started visualizing just by using a bar graph, which city we should be living in based on our budget. Then we pretended to be Starbucks and started looking at the customer age groups to try and figure out what is the age group that comes to the coffee shop and so we can try and optimize for that. And that's just the first two lessons. There's so much more. To unlock everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, go to www.brilliant.org slash floateheadphysics. And the first 200 of you will also get a 20% off on your annual premium subscription. The link is in the description. Thanks, thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel. And now back to the video. So what was the resolution? The resolution is that events that are simultaneous in one frame need not be simultaneous in a moving frame. That was the mistake that we made. This is what we call the relativity of simultaneity. And how did we discover it? Just by considering the fact that the speed of light must be a constant in all reference frames. Isn't that incredible? Everything in relativity can be derived from that postulate. I find that absolutely incredible. Let me now show you how mind-boggling relativity of simultaneity truly is, okay? So we just saw that two events that can happen one after the other for one person can happen at the same time for some other person, right? What if we consider the event where my mom was born and the second event where I was born? From the people on the earth, they would say that, hey, my mom was born first and then I was born. You see where I'm going with this? Does that mean there are people out there moving at some relative speed who will say that both of these events are simultaneous, which means they will say that both I and my mom were born at the same time? That can't be true, right? How can that be? It, there's no way I and my mom can be born at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. And yet we just saw two events that happened one after the other 
can happen at the same time for some other person. So what's going on over here? This is the question I really want to leave you folks hanging because I want you to think about it. I want you to understand how mind-boggling relativity of simultaneity is. And if you are an expert in physics who already knows the answers, please do not put the spoilers in the comment section. Discovering physics involves attempting a solution, trying to look at somebody else's solution and see if you can critique it and all of that. And that's what the comment section is for. If you are already an expert, then help others, nudge them, but do not spoil it for others. So I'll leave you over here. And if it turns out there is a great discussion over there, I will participate and uh, we'll get to the bottom of this in a future video. So see you. And yeah, since you are here till the end, I'm gonna play the whole thing one more time because it's just so cool. Okay, bye. <laughs>